We are here for week number 21 here in the Nova Rise Cup Series. As the last time the Nova Rise Cup Series drivers hit the track, Scott Johnson took the track flag at Sonoma after completely dominating that race after passing Kyle Ruthen in the early portion of that race. The big storyline is actually, this storyline actually came in just a few moments ago. Carson Brooks in the 29 has announced that he will run car number 29 for the 2016 season for Piper Incorporation. Carson Brooks will rep be replacing the departing Stephen Volk, who will be going to Howell Wilson Racing in 2016. As this story just came in, we will get more contract de details and information when we get it, but this story was just broken in from the Popper Corporation offices. Carson Brooks, who will be leaving the Arona Racing Team following this year due to performances sustained in the last several years, he will be racing for Piper Corporation in the team's number 29 car. We do expect Armorall to potentially be back in that 29 car for, the two, for 2016. And now for our Week 21 winners, the rest of our Week 21 winners, we had two events run here at Denver, one at Iowa and one at Rockingham, as most of us came in the major regional tour. In the Kellogg Southwest and Aero Series took home at Denver in the Southwest Division, Carl Sheenson used pit strategy to win the race at the Southwest. He pitted earlier than the leaders and took advantage of that by building up an eventual lead. Luke Williams in car number 949 won the race Aero Series in a more bizarre fashion after he almost nearly lost the race. However, John Corbett in car number 953 just drove right into the back of him, basically costing himself the victory and probably the biggest choke up in potentially in the race Aero Series history and possibly in Novar history. The Novar Kellogg Southeast Division raced at Rockingham, where Devin Hamlin took his second victory of the season at Rockingham Speedway in the Kellogg Southeast Division. And the race in the Kellogg Northeast race at Iowa saw Luke Haverton take home a checker flag in a 16 caution event, which I believe saw 80 caution flag laps were run around. And it's also notable that Bray Brendan Way, a normal starting park driver, actually finished that race in fourth. The Denver International Speedway is a 1.311 mile speedway located in Denver, Colorado. We'll be racing here for 153 laps. And the last time we raced here was in the, during the 2011 season where Eddie Johnson took home the victory. This track is also unique as it's being set up as the track is layout. It's actually on the hill where the front straightaway is located on the bottom of the hill. And then when you go up to turns one and two, it's actually you're climbing up the hill to the top of the hill where the back stretch is located. And it also includes a waterfall that leads into a lake that's in the middle of the racetrack. And then turns three and four, you go down the hill, which actually those, as a result, turns three and four have basically been a, where drivers had had a lot of issues and makes it a very challenging track on the Novar circuit for Denver. Winning the Aflac Pole Award here for the second time this season is Jake Carroll in car number 76. Silver Green Racing gets three of its four cars in the top four. The other one being Cody Wyke in the 22, he starts his race in 10th. The other, Ethan Littinger, actually failed to qualify for the race. Scott Johnson, car number 58, last week's winner, starts this race in 9th. Shane Harden, car number 59, starts in 14th. Ma Mike Hogan, car number 17, will start this race in 18th. Mark McGill, the fastest in the second group, starts this race in 22nd. Chris Devin, car number 06, starts in the 32nd spot. As Sean McDowell, who had a very good run last week at Sonoma, he starts this race in 35th. And rounding out the field is Carson Brooks and Darren DeBose. So Jake Carroll, car number 76, leads the field down to the green flag. With Shane Nargan, car number 32, on his outside with the other two silver green cars. race cars right behind Killen. Nargan just does not get a good restart, get a good start, as Killen just already gets away. He already has a pretty sizable lead heading into turn numbers three and four. Damon Scott, car number 18, will take over that second spot away from Shane Nargan, as Walter Youth and Chandler Blake will also try to take away that third spot away from Shane Nargan, but looks like as they head out of turn number four, Shane Nargan, car number 32, will hang on into that for that third spot. Walt Yithane still trying to fight back, but Nargan will eventually get it. Here's Walt Yithane, car number eight. As I mentioned, he actually failed to qualify for last week's race at Sonoma. So going into the weekend, that weekend he had about a 40 plus point lead. And now going into this weekend is roughly eight points as Walt Yithane right now is running in the fourth spot right now. Chad like his teammate right behind him, is right behind him in the fifth spot. As we would have our first caution of the event come out on lap number three here. As Carson Brooks gets into Marcus Powell, which gets into the wall. Darren DeBose, the car number 99, is also collected. The 74 would go out of the race. Carson Brooks in the 75 continue on, so not a good start for one race coming in after he was announced to be the driver of the 29. Shane Larkin, car number 32, led on the restart with Walter Youth, the car number 8, running in second case, Lester in third, and James 
Jason Duke running in the fourth spot. As they head out of turn number two, you already see about a group of seven cars already getting away from the rest of the pack, which that's led by Justin Clinkson in the 24. As we're starting to get the uh, scramble for the race lead. There you see Jason Duke, car number six. He's already got to try the slingshot on the outside. As coming out of turn number four, Lester looks like he'll hang on to that fourth spot coming across the line. But Walt Ethan and Shane Hargan will battle with the lead. Here, Casey Electric gets a really power run in there, but I believe can't stick it. So, But that's going to get Jason Duke in the 6-6 onto the high side as Walter Youthen and Shane Nargan are side-by-side -side for the race lead. Duke gets by Lester for the third spot as Casey Lester, who's had top five finishes in pretty much the last several races he qualified for, as the last, the actual last race he finished 41st, and then DNQ in Sonoma, but... Walter Youthen and Shane Nargan are still battling it out for the lead. As you see the rest of the cars back there, Nargan gets a good run in the middle of turn one and two on the outside line and will eventually power through. Here's a very nice looking view from the top of the stands as they see the downhill run from turns number three and four as they are now at the bottom of the hill and the front straightaway. Shane Nargan will lead the lap, but Jason Duke and Walter Youthen are still battling it out and clashing it for that second spot as Jason Duke of the 66 is trying to get up there. Duke looks like he'll clear Youth and for that second spot as now they're at the top of the hill and on the back straightaway, there's that waterfall I was talking about in the pre-race show. As now they head it back into turn number three and now down the down here slope, which this spec section of the track has, tennis has caused the most accidents because of the high amount of speed you're carrying down the hill and also a slightly tough corner and you have to run on the outside line. We would have an incident in the back around lap number 30, but this would not bring out a yellow flag. Carter Pavs gets into Darren DuBose, car number 99, who was just, who has his day come from bad to worse because of that. But to make it even worse, the yellow flag never came up for car number 99. As they see the 99, we keep on going. Mike Hogan was another driver that failed to qualify at Sonoma last week. However, he is running, I believe, right now in the eighth position, if I'm not mistaken. Scott Harper, car number six. Running a ninth, Justin Clinkson has fallen back a little bit, so has the 15 inch Heather Blake. Blake, who was up there with the leaders early on the, in the race, however, since the um, first caution, he's kind of slid back a little bit. Hogan in the 17, who I believe led the points at about a few weeks ago, has just not had the luck he wanted. We would see Shane Harden, the 59, also jump into the mix as well, as Walt at the number 8 will eventually fall back from the spot as. Harden, the 59, who has just been very strong throughout the weekend. And Harden, with a conservative effort, kind of where you see him do that as he finished 11th at Sonoma, basically because he was just being conservative for the most, for most of the time. Harden, the 59, will immediately take over the... try to take over the second spot. Jason Duke, the 66, 66, still trying to fight back as the eight of Walter Youthen trying to get to the... still trying to hold on to the bottom line, hoping the best, but... That's not going to work out. Shane Harden in the 59 eventually will go and challenge for the race lead on the 32 of Shane Nargan. And there you see the lap car Darren DeBose who was turned around a little bit earlier on in the race. However, to make matters worse, he is already about to go a, a lap down here as the 32 of Nargan still holding it at house. High line, Harden in the 59 will get a really good run down the hill. But looks like Nargan in the 32 will hang on for the spot as they are side by side. Nargan led that lap, but Harden in the 59 trying to use that outside line as Harden in the 59 will get the run on the high line and will beat Nargan to the lead there. But Nargan in the 32 is still trying to fight back as they head down the back straightaway. It's a four car group for the lead as Walter Youth and Jason Duke are also in the fray, but they are currently waiting back to see what happens between the 32 and the 59. Harden down the hill and looks like using that downhill momentum, Harden's gonna just power by the 32 for the lead of this race. And Shane Harden has taken over the lead here on lap number 40 something. However, Shane Nargan, car number 32, would eventually fight back and would actually use that outside line to his advantage as they see Harden led that lap. However, Nargan in the 32 will eventually just power right by Harden, just kind of in the similar manner that Harden did in the previous lap, except that Harden looks like Nargan tries that outside line, very similar manner to how Harden beat him, however, it looks like the 32 of Nargan clears the 59 of Harden. And Shane Nargan, car number 32, retakes the lead away as the 59 of Harden and Jason Dugan second. They are now clashing it out for a second. Harden's going to drop back to third, but he gets a really good run in the middle of the straightaway and will retake that second spot away from the Ada Walt Youth. And 
as now we take a look at the rest of the battle for the lead as we have the 8 and the 32. This is the battle for the lead, for the lead now as Jason Duke in the 66 is also trying to lurk around there. Harden has dropped back since then. Youth in the 8 will try to use that outside line very similar to how Harden does and just like with Harden he takes the lead away but with that lap car of Darren DeBose is kind of interfering with the lap with the leaders here as DeBose just trying to get there. We would have a first cycle of green flag stops here on lap number 65. Casey Lester and Jason Duke were the first two cars entering pit road. They were followed by Walter Youth in car number 8 and many other cars as I believe they all came in various times. Walter Youth came in. Shane Nargo came in about a few laps later. We're actually coming about two laps later as a result as Dargan in 32 will enter the pits there. And then Shane Harden, the car with the line, would enter the pits late. He was, I believe, one of the last cars to pit. While green flag pit stops were happening, we would have our second caution of the race on lap number 70. There you see Shane Howard in the 0-3. He actually had to avoid the third out of Walter Green was pitting. Jay gets a good run and uses it just to turn the 0-3 at Howard. Howard spins back up the track and gets into Tony Wider, Jason, Damon Scott, uh, Jamie Scott A, CJ Gordon, Keith Hales, and then Brian Dawson runs into the back of Mac Hamlin and Gordon Billard. So a big pile up on the front straightaway during green flag stops. There you see the L1 and on North. The 03 had just drives back up the track. Tony Ryder had nowhere to go, as I believe Darren DeBoe is also involved. Max Rapon also got in there. And then Brian Dawson just plunges into the back of the 28. And Max Rapon, there you see the rest of the leaders coming in. Cody Wyke, I believe, also got a piece of that as well because of that. So tough break for all those drivers who are right there. As a result, this would completely screw up how the restarter was as on the restart lap number 74, Scott Johnson was the first car in line. However, the race leader was car number 12 of Casey Lester. The second place car was car number 66 of Jason Duke. As they now head up the track, Casey Lester, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, has had finished in the top 10, I believe in four of the last seven races he's qualified for. And in, he is finished in the top five in half of those, the other two being ninth place finishes his other two finishes that were outside of the top 10 was a 20th place finish in Boston and then a 41st place effort at Branson as we now try to complete the lap number 76. We would have our next caution come around about the end of that lap as Gordon Miller gets into the wall with, with Sean McDowell. He then turns the 10 around. That gets in and then spins in front of Harden. Harden, I believe, got minor damage, but not enough to kind of take him out of contention. I believe Cameron Brooks in the 33 also did as well. As a result, Casey Lister would then be the first car in line and be the leader of the restart with Jason Duke, car number 66, running in second. Shane Nargan, car number 32, running in third. Walt Heath is trying to take away that fourth spot from the 32 of Shane Nargan as now the lap cars of Cody White and Shane Kitts in car number 21 being in the way. Walt Heath gets a really good run. He already got by Jason Duke, and now Walt Heath might have a chance to take the lead away from Casey Lester in the 12 here. But the 21 of Shane Kitts is already in the way. White's in the wall. Lester's going to try to take try to take advantage of that, and Walter Youth in, in just one lap goes from fourth and near contact between Cody Wyke and Shane Nargan. Last year, they tied up in the point standings, and now they nearly run into each other. Lap number 81, we see our fourth caution of the race. Scott Johnson, Mark Mungillo, Gordon Bill, Casey Littinger all get around as here's from Scott Johnson's perspective. He just washes up the track, and that gets into Sean McDowell, Casey Littinger, Gordon Billard, Mark Mungillo, and nearly gets sideswiped by the 96 to Tobias Newbridge. Uh, Walt Youth in car number 8 would then take the lead away on the restart. So after having one caution within the first 70 laps, we've had three in the last 10 laps. But luckily, as the 8th car drives away from the rest of the pack, the 12th gate Lester are all following suit as well. Jason Duke and Shank and Chandler Blake in the 15th also there as well. As they see Casey Lester in the 12th just trying to hold his line and probably trying to find a way to get a slingshot run. Lester tries it here, but I believe he doesn't have the line to stick it on the outside as the AWL2 takes the lead away as Walt Youthen is in a familiar sight leading the race. However, one car that would really emerge out as a very strong car throughout the second half of the race would be the 98 of Shane Clark III. Clark, who I believe pitted around, I think, lap number 67, would then take the lead away from the AWL2 Youthen. Clark in the 98 would have a very good car there trying to use the outside line and would take the lead away with extremely relative ease as that's kind of unusual as Clark in the 98 has just had a very dismal 2015 campaign with 2014 as he won his first career race at Darling in the overtime thriller at Darlington but 2015 has not been anything of nowhere near of good it's been gruesome for that 98 team 
As meanwhile, later on in the run, Shane Clark III and I-8, I believe you barely see him in the picture as he's already just drove, has already just driven away from Walter Youth in the eighth. As well as Shane Harden and Chandler Blake have also run down those two cars. Shane Harden, as I mentioned, is probably one of the strongest cars all year. As now also a contender here. As he is just trying to battle with Walter Youth and trying to get that second spot away. Chandler Blake in the 15. As I, mentioned, as I actually mentioned in the last week's race of the Sonoma, Sonoma has had put up some solid, consistent runs. However, it's not nowhere near as he, what he did during the 2014 season, where he nearly won the championship that year. Clark and the, Harden of the 59 will try the outside line once again. Here's a close-up angle of that battle. The third, Harden in the 59 will take the spot away from Walter Ethan in the 8, and Chandler Blake in the 15 will then also do so as well. Blake in the 15 will just drive around the 8 with relative ease. However, he has to slot here. Has to check it up a little bit or else he'll slide into that turn two wall. As as a result, Walter Youth in the eight will still have now have a challenge on the four-time Novar Varese Cup Series champ, Chandler Blake. Blake, who almost became a five-time champion during the 2014 season. However, he basically blew a 39-point lead with about two races remaining at Texas. Another car that would come out very similar to Shane Clark III's would be the 56 of Chris Clark. There you see the 59 of Shane Harden. Harden actually would really hit under the cycle of Green stuff when this clip was actually recorded. As Clark in the 56 did drive right by on Walter Youth in the 88. As they see Harden in the 59, Harden as we'll actually get to him later. Clark in the 56 would dive down pit road as this was actually a cycle of green flag stops. And they would actually be happening from various points of the race. Although it would happen mostly around lap numbers 134 around there. Shane Harden in the 59 would then dive into pit road and make his pit stop. He actually would make his pit stop around lap number 117, if I'm not mistaken, as he... Dives down pit road. Shane Clark third in the 98. We're not pit until about lap 127, so about 10 laps later than Harden. As there you see another car also in there that's Tobias Newbridge in the 96. And as there you see Clark is going to enter his pit. As now up the hill, as a result, Chandler Blake in the 15 would then take the lead away with Walter Youth in the second. As there you see the advantage you get with pressure tires. As there you see, I believe, with Clark in the 59 just drove off. However, Blake in the 15 would pit a few laps later as well as I believe Walt Yithin in the 8 would also do so as well. As a result of this, Shane Harden in the 59 would then take over the race lead as during this whole cycle of circumstances, Harden would actually build up to about a four second lead. However, Shane Clark III had a faster car. The only problem with that was that Clark was barred in a lot of, was involved in a lot of lap traffic. Harden was also in it as well. And it was kind of difficult for both of them to pass. So, Harden, so Clark was actually closing in on the leaders. However, couldn't get enough time. However, luckily for Clark, we would have caution lap 140. Shane Kitson gets runs up the racetrack. Caroline Salvatore gets into him. Caroline Salvatore spins up the track and nearly takes out several cars. Um, in the replay, Salvatore, I believe, washed up into the track, got into Kinson after he got into the wall. And then Salvatore was trying to keep going and gets himself gets himself turned around. Coming to the restart, we have an unfortunate moment for Tobias Newbridge in the 96. Newbridge, who was running 11th at the time, just blows up from the 96. So tough break for Tobias Newbridge. Newbridge, who fails to qualify for a lot of his races, but whenever he does qualify, he puts that car in the top 20, kind of exceeding expectations from the critics. On the restart, sent will be Shane Harden to come to 59, since it is a restart with less than 10 laps to go. He has about a six-car buffer from him and Shane Clark III, since the restart is less than 10 laps to go. Clark in the 59, Harden in the 59 will actually didn't get a good restart as he wanted, as Clark can now probably potentially strike as he is Despite being six cars back, he could probably get around those six cars, which is relative ease. Jake Carolyn in the 76 will then go to the high side. Scott Harper in the six also trying suit as well. The 37 one of Ronald Portland and also the two of Ryan Pearson as well. Here's a few laps later as Clark has already gotten by a few cars. Jan Norrie's going to try to get to the outside. Chris Clark's, I believe, running for the third spot as well. As I mean, Clark's had to check up and Clark's going to get turned around in front of the field. Clark in the 56 will get turned around in front of the field. As the 56, Clark gets spun around. He had contact from Chris Devon, and then I believe when he was trying to get the car back, he'll try to turn it around as he'll get hit hard by the 99 of Darren DeBose. So Darren DeBose, I believe Clark made a rookie mistake and just drove back up the racing surface, and as a result, gets clobbered by Darren DeBose. There you see DeBose holding his line, and then he never saw the 56 until there. So the 99 just drives straight into the back. Of the 56 of Chris Clark. Clark was running fifth at the time, so tough break for him. The race started with the race would restart with two laps to go. Clark and the Harden in the 59 would easily get away from the 22 of Cody White. 
And you might have thought that was just the farewell song for his victory here. But White gets a really good run in turn number two. Clark in the uh, Mike Hogan in the 17. Ryan Pearson, the only other two lap cars there as well. As there you see White in the 22. White's going to get a good run. Going to take advantage on the outside. Mike Hogan in the 17 is going to follow suit. Hogan into the 17. Can't appear to get to the high line. There you see Clark in the 98. Already going to try to take advantage. But Hogan in the 17 is going to help Harden. And going to stick to the bottom line. There you see Clark in the 98. Clark in the 98 is already there now. As now they head up the hills of turn number 1 and 2. The white flag's already out. As the 98 of Clark. Clark is now there. So all Clark needs to do now is simply jump to the high side. And he might be able to score his second victory of the season. Career victory. And both of his career victories come on last lap passes. Clark will try to do so. But Scott Johnson gets there. So Scott Johnson will beat Clark to the long, to the outside. And coming out of coming to the final straightaway. Shane Harden in the 59 will score his fourth victory of the season. And career win number 15 for Shane Harden here at Denver. Shane Harden in car number 59 uses a late restart and also pitch strategies to be able to oust his competitors and take the victory here for the fourth time this season, earning his 15th victory of his career. Shane Clark III, who came very close to snapping his second career victory, falls short due to a botched attempt on a potential slingshot coming out of the final corner, but a second place finish for Clark with the season he's had is a great for him and potentially also a win for him. Chad LeBlake, corner 15, finishes third. I believe this is his best finish since his Dunsville victory, if I'm not mistaken. Walter Youth, in one week removed from D and Qing at Sonoma, rebounds to a fourth place finish. Casey Lester in Carnival 12, finishes in the top five for the fifth time in the last seven races he's qualified. And during that stretch, he's also finished in the top, inside the top five in three of those races. And I mentioned the other two were ninth place finishes. Mark Mungilla with a quiet sixth place finish in car number 20. So good finish for him. Shane Nargan, the lap leader in this race, had a very strong car early in the race, but was shuffled from pit strategy as it just never really worked his way. Walter Green, car number 39, another quiet run for him. Car number 39, he finishes his race in eighth. Eddie Johns, car number 55, who was lurking around inside the top 10 for most of the race and now gets in and finishes this race in ninth. And rounding out the top 10 is Jake Kierlin in car number 76. The other, there were only two other cars that finished on the lead lap, those two being the 11th place finisher, Ronald Portland, and the 12th place finisher, Scott Harper. And now let's take a look at their point standings. Walt Youth in car number 8 still hangs on to the points lead, but now it's down to 5 points heading into Salt Lake City. Shane Harden at the 59 with his victory and with Walt Youth finishing 4th. It was not enough for Harden to take over the points lead, but it was just enough for Harden to at least cut the deficit even more. Next week's race at Salt Lake City will be a kind of a wild card, but potentially we'll see these two possibly in contention for the victory in next week's race. Scott Johnson covering 58, third in the point standings, 29 points back of the points leader. He is 24 back of Shane Harden covering 59. Mike Hogan, car number 17, he is fourth in the point standings, 51 points back of the points leader. Actually, 51 points back of the points leader and 22 back from Scott Johnson. So we got two 20 point deficits, 20 point plus deficits from third and the fourth place drivers. Fifth is Ethan Linton Jr., car number 51. He actually, I believe, just dropped the spot due to him being queuing. as now 61 points back of the points leader. Casey Lester, car number 12, he is 19 points back of Ethan Linton and is six in the point standings. I believe he didn't gain any ground. There, Chadler Blake and Eddie Johns remain stationed in their positions. Blake remaining in the seventh in the point standings, while Eddie Johns remaining in eighth. Shane Nargan cracks into the top 10, I believe, for the first time this year. So, finally a good break happening with Nargan, but a champ at a second consecutive championship might be out the window with the amount of races we have left and the performances that we have seen from Walt Youth and Shane Nargan. So, at least if Shane Nargan can rack up some wins, which for him it's kind of been tough barring how his season has gone we probably won't see a back-to-back -back champion in Shane Norgan but a top 10 is still within reach with him climbing in this week and rounding out the top 10 is TJ Gordon in car number 48 he drops the spot to the, 10 the point standings and now let's take a look at 11 through 20 Jake Carroll in car number 76 climbs five spots into 11 of the point standings, he is 150 points. Back of the points leader, Jason Collins, who drops out of the top 10 due to him DNQing for this race. He drops to 12th in the point standings. Jason Duke in car number 66 jumps to 13th in the point standings, 159 points back. Damon Scott, car number 18, 
drops the spot to 14, so essentially the 66 and 18 just swap places. Alan Kimmel dropped three spots to 15th in the point standings. He is 171 points back. Cody White, just a couple of weeks removed from his victory at New York, he gained the spot to 16th in the point standings, 172 points back. Max Rakan in card number 77 climbs four spots to 17th in the point standings. Gary Ethan in card number 57 falls three spots to 18th in the point standings. 19th is Jay Norrie in card number 01. He, she has gained five spots into 19th in the point standings. And Chris Clark in card number 56 is 20th in the point standings. To show you how good Monster Energy Racing has been all year, Clark is the lowest of the Monster Energy Racing cars in the point standings at all. I believe that is, I believe, that's probably a best out of all teams as the team's fifth car is 20th in the point standings. And now let's take a look at our race recap. There were six cautions for 24 laps. Shane Clark III, our second place finisher, gained 21 spots as to be our hard charger. Shane Norgan led 50 laps in round two, finishing in sixth. And there were seven leaders for 14 lead changes. The next time that Overall Fires Cup Series drivers hit the track, it will be a triple header weekend at Salt Lake City. The Fires Cup Series racing the 17th race of the season there. The Gatorade Series being the 15th race and the GameStop Truck Series being the 12th race of the season. The Kellogg's Northwestern Division race will be at the Knox Raceway. We'd like to congratulate Shane Harden on scoring his fourth victory of the season, and we will see you next week at Salt Lake City, Utah.